Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Off the Leash. It feels strange to be here again, uh, third night in a row, uh, now in my basement, hunkered down, and hopefully um, we'll have some fun tonight with my guests. Thank you for being here. Um, these are no doubt um, difficult and strange times, and these little broadcasts of an evening at eight o'clock Atlantic time are really just meant as a way of keeping you in touch with us here at Neptune. Um, if during the course of this little broadcast, you want to ask uh, uh, our guests any questions, you can. Uh, I think it comes up a few seconds after you type, uh, but I will try and keep an eye on that. I'm running the technology as well, so uh, it's gonna go horribly wrong various times, but it'll be all my fault. So let's uh, start off by welcoming our special guest tonight, I think one in Toronto and one in New York City, which sounds very exciting. Uh, please welcome uh, from Toronto, our friend, our own Captain Hook, Kelly Holliff. Kelly, hi. Hello. I can hear you. I can see you and hear you. It's a miracle. Okay, let's bring in Samantha as well. Uh, our Cinderella and of course, one of the stars of the award-winning Color Purple. Please welcome Samantha Waltz to the live stream. Hello. Hi, How are you? Good. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Sam. Before we begin, I just want to get something clear. Um, I, I think I heard a rumor that you two have actually never met or worked together. Never. Never no. met. We've now met virtually. <laughs> Hopefully one day we'll be able to hug each other, though. Love yeah. your work. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know. <laughs> That's nice. You weren't talking to me, though, were you? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to establish that. Um, so it's it's great to see you both again. How are you doing right now um, in this unusual situation we find ourselves in? Are you are you alone, uh, or do you have have people with you? What, what what's your situation? Go Kelly, you want to go first? Go ahead. Um, well, uh, like, uh, as, as you know, Jeremy, um, I was doing noises off in Edmonton. Um, so it, it came to a, a pretty drastic halt, uh, a few weeks ago and I ended up coming home much earlier than I was going to be. And I'm in Toronto. Um, uh, and as of right now, I, I think I'm staying here for a while because a lot of my stuff as well, like along with everyone else, else's stuff has been canceled um, or or being postponed. But we're we're all waiting to hear. So right now, I'm just home and um and waiting to see what happens. There's a lot of unanswered questions right now for me. So, uh, like everyone else, just 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 sitting tight and and waiting to hear. It was that a good answer? I don't know. That was oh, a great oh. answer. No, so yeah, and actually, um, no, people sure. have, people have commented already. Uh, your friend Mary Colin Chisholm, she's waving to you. I love uh, Mary Colin Chisholm was also in the production of Noises Off that uh, we just uh, did in Edmonton that finished early. And uh, of course, Michelle Langell, who watches every single night. Oh, Michelle. There we go. Uh, and just to uh, counteract all that love. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, what about you, Sam? What about you, Sam? What are you up uh, to? I, so I'm, we're in Brooklyn, uh, New York. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about which show I'm in, but I uh, was rehearsing for a Broadway production here, like uh, Kelly also rehearsing in Edmonton. And um, uh, and then we just, I just got sent home and it was a day before my put in rehearsal, which I was very excited about. Um, and then uh, we went home, but it was so funny because I, I said to my stage manager, I was like, Oh, so can I just go down and just finish the routine? Because we were almost at the end of the whole show. So I would really love to just finish that up. And she was like, no, no, you need to go home. And I was like, oh, hmm. okay, I, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, just totally not understanding the scale of it and just how uh, Broadway was um, you know, working at the time in the Broadway League, talking to the unions and vice versa. So uh, yeah. Uh, so we're here. I'm here with my husband. Uh, we have this lovely opportunity now to make this apartment feel like home. So I was very grateful for that up until this week. 
um, week three, which I was like, okay, I'm done climbing ladders and unpacking boxes. Yeah. yeah. And how are you? How are you both keeping sane? Um, here we are now in week three, I guess, for most people. Um, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get outside as much as possible and not not touch or speak to anybody. Just uh, I'm trying to just get get some sun really uh that that is keeping my like mental health at bay uh and for some reason i've been so busy filling the days and i don't know why like there's really nothing to do but i seem to be busy doing things um and then the end of the day comes and i'm like whoa that was a busy day for no reason <laughs> it does go like that doesn't it yeah I, I like a lot of people i think i'm having trouble remembering what day of the week it is yeah so like tomorrow is Friday day, let's say of the weekend, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, David Light thinks you're nice. Oh, oh David Light. Uh, there we go. Turn this into a love fest. So um, I, I wonder if either of you can, I, I've, I've obviously worked with you both now and we've enjoyed having you both at Neptune. Maybe, maybe somebody on here can come up with a show title where we could have the two of you together. Well, that we're, they pay you for that, right, Jeremy? Or is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, that's my job. Get him! Get him! No, you missed my point. I actually don't want you to be in a show together. Yes, no. you do. No, because it would be it would be very difficult. Yeah, worse than. Yeah, um, <laughs> but. Uh, can you tell us, uh, maybe Sam, you go first. Tell us, tell us how you first came to come to Neptune. Oh, yes. Oh, I think it was us meeting at the Color Purple auditions. Oh yeah. Well. And, then, and then you creepily followed me outside and asked me to <laughs> audition for Cinderella. <laughs> no, wait, that, sound, that makes it sound really dodgy. Oh no, I'm just kidding. There were other Hold people. It was not dodgy, people. It was oh, my like job. You me out there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, I think we met at the Color Purple auditions, and uh, uh, <laughs> I'll be very transparent. I didn't know who you were sitting there in the queue. <laughs> I was like, who's this guy? Um, and then I thought, oh, maybe he's part of you know music or production. The cleaning so stuff. I cleaning stuff, um, and then uh, <laughs> he followed me out, and Kim asked me to wait for a moment um, with the director of Color Purple, Kim, Rep Kim really represent, and um, and then we had a brief chat, and I was like, no, 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 I'm pretty sure I submitted for that uh, because you did say you wanted all diversities and ethnicities represented on stage. And so I wanted to make sure I was challenging that in all the right ways by submitting. <laughs> and uh, you were like, no, I've never seen you before. And that was the end of my relationship with my agent, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you auditioned and then, you, then actually what happened, and I think we've both told this story, but I've told it more than you. Where, oh. where where we cast you as Cinderella, and your agent at the time said she's in. And the next day, I got a text from you, and you said we need to talk and have a meeting. And uh, then you proceeded on the telephone to interview me for forty-five minutes to see whether I was right. What? That long? It was. Yeah, it felt it. <laughs> it felt it. But then look what happened. What yeah. happened basically was this. <laughs> <laughs> and of yeah. course, of course uh, so many things, so many dresses. So many dresses. And, you know, I mean, really, I, I, you know, you say that you don't know who I am, but. Yeah. That's really. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh and then occasionally we look cool. Yeah. Well, I look cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then we don't. <laughs> Wait, you had all of these pictures on standby? Yeah, I did. And look, and we then uh, before you know, I, I now want uh, Kelly Holliff. Uh, Kelly, let me get rid of that picture. It's, it's disturbing. I mean, I like it right there. So keep no. it. Yeah. No. Kelly Holliff, why don't you tell the story now? Why don't you tell 
uh, your audition story for Neptune Theater. I think people might want to hear that and what it led to. Well, actually, Sam, mine is a mine was sort of like yours in a way. I was auditioning for um, last five years, uh, and then I I I think we were in callbacks or something, and and I was leaving the room, and Jeremy creepily ran after me. <laughs> I wasn't creepy, um, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to audition for Peter Pan?" Uh, and I didn't know that Peter Pan was happening at that time because I was so uh, I, I I just. I just was auditioning for last five years and, and they were at the same, they conflicted. Uh, so I was like, yeah, of course, sure. Uh, and so I went in for Peter Pan um, and like, I didn't have anything prepared. Like Jeremy was like, do you have a monologue? And I was like, oh, a uh, who? Uh, and so I just asked if I could just do like some cabaret-y stuff. Um, and then then the rest is history, yikes, Jeremy. And then I, uh, um, I asked what they wanted to hear, and I had a bunch of um, psycho songs in my book, like uh, stupid stuff. Uh, one with a Celine medley, and um, and I noticed that there was a fan in the corner of the room uh, that wasn't plugged in; it was just broken. Um, and I was, and I just said, like, I I, I cannot do this without that fan. Um, and Jeremy was like. He, he was so calm like instantly he was like yes 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 do it do it but but i i i i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to take pictures <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds okay that sounds awful but but in the best you way alone in the room there were a lot of people in the room um and actually i said if you're about to sing a celine dion song to a fan blowing in your face do you want a photographic record of this? Because this is the craziest audition ever. And you said, yes. And I said, well, I, I'm only going to do it on your phone because I can't take the photos. I don't want the photos. And then they all got their phones out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Oh. It was so fun. I, listen, it was, it was, it was actually, I think it was the best audition of my life. Like it was, it was so fun because it was so playful. And, um, yeah. and then I realized that you had a similar sense of humor and, the rest was history. Um, was great. So what happened is I went back to my hotel that night and I dug out the script for Peter Pan, Samantha, and I actually rewrote Hook's first number to be that very song. Oh and I wrote God. in that the pirates came in with a giant industrial sized um, medieval decorated fan and then proceeded to do the Celine Dion number with fog and debris being thrown into the fan, and that became the opening number, the highlight of the show, I think. Uh, <laughs> Avery Jean Brennan is gonna be on me for that. Um, anyway, so there you go. You both got interesting, slightly weird audition stories featuring me facing <laughs> you out of a room. I'm completely in love with you, Kelly, now that you've told me that story. I'm in love with you too. Let's get married. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We have to talk to my husband. We could talk about it. Definitely, it's on the table for sure. Avery Jean, <laughs> you are <laughs> always there. <laughs> and you, my darling, will always be number one. Um, now, uh, wait. Now, hold on. Somebody, somebody has uh, suggested a show. I saw it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Well, not just that one, actually. There's yeah. a couple good ones. We got some Wicked going on. Oh yes. There we go. Laura some Thornton. Red time. Ragtime, time. Mm -hmm. Wicked Ragtime. There's so many waitresses. Yep. Yeah. David Light. And of course, Laura Thornton um, used to be my friend. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> do, you, do either of you have any, uh, any uh, not, not dramatic, but you know, uh, any lighter stories from performances when you were at Neptune? Anything that kind of went wrong or crazy? Um, probably it didn't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one, but it only involves me, really. Um, because, well, no, maybe the Fab Five also. Uh, the Fab Five. So at the end, when we sing, this is this is me. Um, at the end of Act Two, Act One, and I'm in the pumpkin carriage, and it's about to lift, the lift is about to go up. Uh, in the lyric, I have this moment where I, I actually, before it goes up, I 
bend my knees and I do this really dramatic like and I'm I'm being you know whisked away because the lift actually ha is a bit you know uh, violent Level? yeah um, <laughs> and I remember going down doing the thing and just bending my knees just so that it doesn't look like I'm rickety or you know the pumpkin carriage that we're all very gracefully being um, uh, rising up and it didn't go up and <laughs> it was the funniest thing because we had this like great malfunction i did the whole dramatic thing and i just stood there on the stage <laughs> <laughs> and, and but, you know, we're dancing, oh we dancing with this crazy stephanie graham like it's just unreal this i like i wish i could watch them all the time they do this amazing you know choreographed piece as i'm belting my face off and they're also belting their face off and I could see them as they're dancing, just looking like she's not up. She's she not up. Like did not move. It was so great. It was so yeah. Great. I, uh, that, and actually, Kelly, you've been up on the same lift. Um, yeah. You both, you both risen. Yeah. Up. I, I seem to just stick people on a lift. I think it happened in Mamma Mia too. Um, I love I, that I, lift. I'm I a one trick pony. It's great. It works. Like, ah, it's not working. Stick them on the left. Stick them in the air. It'll be great. Bring the curtain down. Throw some smoke at them. It's going to be marvelous. <laughs> Kelly, what about you? Well, you uh, I mean, like, literally every single show was different and frightening. <laughs> um, I Like, the, the thing that I love about you and, and working with Neptune is that, like, I think that you have a pretty good idea of, of what I do and... Um, and you sort of let me run in free a little bit with guidelines. Um, and you, you, you know, that I, I do enjoy, um, a little bit of improv fun and you, mm. there was a section where, um, every night I got to bring up a different person from the audience and have a little bit of fun with them. And it would change depending on who we got. We just had to go with it. Um, and what i mean there were so many stories like like when i i call them sailors when they come up and like there were a few that were actual sailors and like it was just uh sort of shocking and um it's what Sorry. it's halifax oh, listen i'm just a simple toronto girl okay <laughs> i'm learning <laughs> anyway so one night um this is the famous the famous uh donny story all my peter pan castmates will know this well we um, I we picked out a, a a very striking striking young lad from the audience, and he was so shockingly um, there um, that it it quite literally took my breath away a little bit because I I got all awkward like like I do and blushy and um, and it it we, we very much diverted from the script, but. Um, Eventually, I think like I don't know, forty minutes later or something, we got back. Um, but yeah, it was it was very very funny. His name was Donnie, and and he was just the best and very. Uh, he was a very beautiful human being. And I, I hear tell <laughs> the funny thing is I I I hope he's not watching this or doesn't get to I, he probably will now get to hear about this uh, because you know social media. Oh, yeah. But, but Donnie sure. was a lovely audience member. I know, and I know that a few of the members of the company that um, live around uh, the city, people have seen him around town. And I, I don't wanna get into anyone into any trouble, except I've been sent, we've been sent some photos of Donnie when he's trying to have a quiet dinner and he doesn't know that he's being photographed by a random um, Peter Pan lost kid, or <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say who. I don't know who it was actually, I shouldn't say anything. But this poor guy has been photographed everywhere. Yeah, we made, we made him famous for sure. <laughs> like, well, to us, to us. Um, oh, you know, uh, while you were both doing the shows, uh, one thing I found uh, really inspiring and, and uh, you know, at the risk of, um, hold on, I just got to move that comment so it's not in front of anyone's face. Um, <laughs> sorry, Sam. Uh, <laughs> I covered up some mental walks with somebody's comment. Um, you both of you really embraced the community and sort of got out and, and connected with uh, the people uh, by visiting uh, members of the community and, and, and everyone in the companies does this. It's quite great to watch. 
Um, and uh, for example, there's a little picture here. I think the three of you there, there is Ryan Rogerson as Smee with Captain Hook and Tinkerbell. And I think you went to the IWK, didn't you, Kelly? Yes, we did. Yeah. It was beautiful. And but you know, earlier I showed you uh, this picture. I, it's become a bit of a tradition that I invade photo shoots for posters. And as you can see, actors love it. Um, <laughs> Kelly Holliff didn't break character for a second. <laughs> She's like, maybe this is the way it's done at Neptune. I <laughs> anyway, um, is there someone, uh, this is a new thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a new, a new little feature now. It's called Behind the Scenes Angels. Um, is there someone at Neptune that maybe doesn't always get um, recognition because they're not an actor? Uh, you know, actors get all the, the glory and the, you know, you, you're seen on stage. Is there someone behind the scenes that you can think of at Neptune that you just want to give a shout out to? And if there isn't, that's fine. They'll just, you know, not forget it. Um, <laughs> is there anyone that you'd like to uh, shout out? Kelly, you go first. Yeah, um, I mean, to be quite honest, like uh, it's one of the best working backstage crews I've ever worked with. Um, all, everyone that worked on Peter Pan was sensational. Um, I, I had a one of my dressers uh, sort of played therapist to me and 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 single handedly got me through a lot of the shows. Uh, Kelsey, um, and then we had incredible. Um, an incredible stage management team. Um, I, I was always on stage, right? So I, I got to deal with Allison a lot and she saved my butt so many times. Like she's just a gem. And then also like, even like the front of stuff, like the box office group of people, like I, I love everyone there, Olivia and Ian and Laura and all, all of them. It's just a great group, everyone. I think, awesome. I think you forgot just one person in the entire staff there, Kelly, well done. <laughs> I love if there's anyone left is there anyone that you, that you remember well oh oh i'm sorry yes that, that's me. that was me oh i dropped her did i drop her from the stream there we go <laughs> i accidentally knocked you out Exit earlier, you could have just sent that private message you talked about. <laughs> wow. Um, yes, I'm I'm in the same boat. Uh, I had the I mean, they're all so lovely. When I was doing color purple though, um, I got really sick and uh and um there was uh there was just this beautiful I'm going to talk about my, I'm going to just go on female empowerment right about now, but um, Miss Hannah um, saved my ass. Uh, and then, of course, Allison, who continuously makes me laugh, but can be so serious at the same time. Like, she's got this amazing balance of... Um, being incredibly heartfelt and full of love and serious, and then she can spin it on a on its head and and then make me cry and laugh at the same time. Yeah. Um, Miss Heather, also. Um, but yeah, it's really when your health fails you and you feel like you're. Uh, I mean, in our business, I mean Kelly, you know this too. If you don't have your health, you don't have much. And so, um, because our bodies and we beat our bodies to work to perfection. Um, I felt at such a disadvantage and, and completely um, not in control of my instrument. And it was the worst feeling. And then I had these beautiful goddesses around me who just made sure I was okay every day. And uh, yeah, for that, I'm the strength of the women there are beautiful, beautiful human beings. Can, can I jump on that? Yeah. I, I agree. I think that. Um, the, the thing that I, I take away from that is um, specifically towards the end of the run where, uh, you know, Sam doing the Christmas contract, it's it's a lot. Yeah. It, especially at the end when you've added the extensions um, and a lot of the show is, is reliant on you. Um, I was sort of clawing my way to the end and I will say that the support system, um, the stage management team, Oki and Hannah and Allison and um, Jeremy, everyone was 
their main concern was my health. Um, and that was very clear every day. And that is something that like, you don't feel everywhere. Um, so no. it was, it was very special, very special. Yeah. It got me through like, that's what sort of, I wanted to do well because I felt supported to do well. Anyway, it was great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that you both have had that experience at Neptune. It is kind of what we're about and we really want to make sure that everyone is, is okay because you know, we need you and we want you to be well and we want you to get through it. Um, actually, one of the things that we've done, actually, <laughs> we've sort of, we, we I, I hear what you're saying about that Christmas contract being so uh, tough. And for the holiday show this year, we had a request, a, a direct request, actually, a, a suggestion from someone that works on the show. Uh, and we took it on board and we actually, uh, we lost a performance on Christmas Eve. We took it out so that the actors actually get to, and the stage management, everyone, in fact, all the crew get to spend Christmas Eve evening um, with their family because we realized that, you know, I was, there was I at home like Ebenezer Scrooge saying, work, Cratchit, work. And uh, everyone else was at the theater. So we, you know, I think I think a lot of theaters try and listen, but uh, anyway, it's uh, so nice to hear that. Um, my last question that I had written down was if we ever worked together, but I, we already talked about that. So um, what are your hopes? What are your hopes for when this thing is over? What, uh, obviously you're in New York, Samantha, and the, you know, on this unnamed show, um, and I'm not gonna try and get out of you what it is, although I know, um, but, I, uh, but I'm not gonna say a word. But um, <laughs> the hope of course is that everything gets up. Was it, I think it, Kelly, for you, was the moment that always got really real when you heard that Broadway shut down? Um, or was there something else? To be honest, no. It was. It, um, it was when the NBA got suspended. Um, uh -huh. That that's when it got real. When I found out that the that, that the NBA the NBA wasn't moving forward, um, then I was like, "This is this is real. That's a lot of money, and that's." It's, and then the same day our show got shut down. So that's when it became really real. I wasn't so much on uh, like the news, like it wasn't on top of it that much until that happened. And that's when it was crazy. Yeah. Um, I just want to go to a question from Michelle. Uh, ah, I mean, yes, lady. She oh, she Yes, it will be my Broadway debut. So uh, the March 17th on St. Patty's Day was supposed to be my, my oh. debut. <laughs> oh, brutal. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's it's not. Uh, I think uh, if for a lot of people in our industry, um, okay, I won't say a lot. I'll say some because we all have different dreams and goals. Uh, one of them is Broadway. And you, you wait and you toil and you... Um, again, beat your body into submission uh, to make it perfect and uh, build your skills to that point. And it takes years. And so what's another few weeks? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're um, and there's a whole bunch of other things that need to be done and put in place in order for people to feel safe and for families to resume. So that's much yeah. more important than... Well, that's oh. a much, that's a much, uh, much clearer better way of looking at it than uh, than what I said. So yeah, I know I understand that. Um, if you were able, and you are, because you're here right now to send a message to uh, the theater community that are watching, and in fact, the broader community that are hopefully watching uh, over the next few days as this thing gets played and played and played and played and <laughs> played for the first 20 seconds and then they switch it off, what would you say? Um, I would say, uh, be patient. Uh, this is bigger than all of us. It's, uh, this, is, this is bigger than a job. It's, it's people's lives. Um, so find some gratitude where you can that, um, we are being asked to stay home and, and stay safe. And there's a lot of, there, there, there should be a lot of gratitude in that. I, I feel grateful that um, that's the most that's being asked of me. Um, people are struggling really hard right now. Um, the people on the front lines and the, and the people that are, are sick. Um, so I would just say, uh, 
send love and stay home and wash your hands and just stay home. That's what I would say. And we'll be back and we'll be back and we will all yeah. be back better than before. We will. Sam, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I think we all need to be honest about where we sit in this. And um, if you need a hug, if you need someone to sing to you, if you need like popcorn and you don't want to leave your, like just reach out. What I would say is just reach out. I have a friend who I was talking to and she mentioned that uh, she just couldn't do it anymore. And she went for a walk with one of her best friends and yes, they held hands with gloves on and yes, they hugged after. And I was like, yay, you go and do that thing. And like, I'm, I'm sorry, but we can't, we also have to be careful with our mental health and our spiritual health. And as much as it's possible, do all the things, all the protocols that are, that are being asked of us, but also take care of your mental health, also take care of your spiritual health and your emotional health. And if you need that hug, and if you need to watch a movie with someone, like just reach out and find a way to do that safely and know that it's all gonna be okay because we can't come out of this worse um, for it. We have to come out of this better for it. And that means a wellness that is of the whole, a wholeness about us and we can't we can't just sacrifice that too so let's all use our discretion of course but please reach out if you need more yes fuckers i said popcorn <laughs> <laughs> i i feel like i want to um chat with you two every night it makes me feel better about the situation and oh there we go there it is ladies. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, it's, been, it's been lovely GNT wagon? Is that what's happening? What happened? Well, I'm surprised it's not a GNT. A gin and tonic is the way you well, go. You know, it was last night. <laughs> and I figured I need to change it up every night. I put a different jacket and shirt on every night. Uh, although I'm wearing pajamas below. Hello. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I feel like I should change it up. Listen, it's been great talking to you. We went way over time. Uh, so I apologize for keeping you longer than I should have away from your isolation. Um, it's, it's great to see you both. And I long for the day when I have you both back in the Neptune building, uh, whether it be separately or in an ideal world, even better together. Um, I said it out loud. <laughs> I said it, people. I'd, I'd buy a ticket for that show. So um, would I. <laughs> and I get a comp. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to let you go. It's been great to see you, and I'm just going to say goodbye to the folks. So thank you both for being there. I'm just going to check nice one to final you, thing. Nice to meet you, darling. All the best. You too. Right. You too. Bye. Be well. Be well. Bye. So uh, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, tomorrow night's guests are the three lead female roles from our production two years ago of Mamma Mia!, uh, Karen Birthright, Julie Martel, and Alison Palmer will be here. Donna and the Dynamos, uh, reminiscing about their time at Neptune. And at some point in the next 24 hours, uh, we'll be announcing the guest lineup for next week because, hey, why not? Um, I do have to tell you, we have some uh, pretty cool news about our guests uh, all week. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, I can't tell you until tomorrow who they are. But uh, it'll be a bit of a surprise and for most people, and they are wonderful guests. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks for being here. Um, of course, if you are able uh, at any point to support an arts organization uh, near and dear to your heart, please do so. Uh, the, the arts community is suffering at this time. Every theater company is in the same boat. Um, if you feel able to contribute to Neptune Theater, going across the bottom of the screen are various ways. You can go to our website. We have a donor page. You can now e-transfer money to Neptune uh, from your bank account, or you can visit canadahelps.org, and that's a really easy way of doing it. I, I looked at it today. It's like two or three clicks. Thank you for being here, and I hope uh, to see you again shortly. Take care. Bye-bye.